Today we're going to be covering another of the Infinity Warps storyline, and a universe where two different Marvel superheroes have been combined into a single superhero due to the Infinity Wars event, which you can click down below. We have a superhero known as Weapon Hex, the merging of X-23 and Scarlet Witch. And today at Comic Storian, we're going to be bringing you her story as we continue our Infinity Wars coverage. Here at Comic Storian, we bring you the complete story series, which is an audio drama of your favorite pop culture lore from comic books to video games games to movies. I hope you enjoy. Mount Wondegore. The castle sits atop a hill, a swirling vortex overhead. For a millennia, unholy rituals have scarred and cursed this place, and also the thunder booms. Inside a group circles the blood-stained floors where a young mutant woman is chained with arcane symbols. A demon from the darkest reaches of the pit peers inward at the offering of a vessel. Black tendrils lash outward, and the woman begins to scream. Yet despite the commands, the vessel does not hold, and the demon pierces through. Damn, I really thought that that would be the one, Herbert sighs. Two scientists begin to get to work, examining the corpse. The science is perfect, as are the spells they worked on. The vessel should have held. So Dr. Kinney makes a theory. What if the problem is that their creations are too perfect? Ficathon destroys perfection. Perhaps they need something flawed. So later, the vessel is placed in Sarah, imbued with the strongest spells and enchantments. The surgery is a success. The child grows within her, and quickly she realizes that it will be a girl. It's a vessel, not a girl, Herbert tries to tell her. But Sarah won't listen, spending her time singing to the unborn child. Don't sing to the prenatal vessel, Herbert tries to convince her, yet it also doesn't help. Herbert is more interested in completing the rituals, making the child the strongest vessel that he can with his dark magics, preparing the warrior Hellhound as her teacher once she is born. Finally, the day arrives, and magical energy rips through the lab as the birth continues, until finally, little Laura is born. At two, they begin to test young Laura, and Sarah protests about them testing her daughter. She's a vessel! Herbert tells her, tossing the child into a pit with a cobra. Yet the girl is too fast for the snake and her claws cut through it quickly. The tiny child gurgles and giggles as she tastes the blood of her enemy. At five, Laura comes running into the kitchen. Herbert smiles, showing Sarah the triggering spell that he created. The spell that shows Laura her target, sending her into a blind berserker rage. Nothing can stop her as her claws pop and she sinks them deep into the pig butler. A concerned Sarah leans over her daughter, asking if she's okay. And as the spell wears off, it leaves only a crying child to be hugged by her mother. We need to talk before you do these things. You don't just do these things to her, Sarah glares at Herbert. It, he insists. At 10, she is training in the art of combat with Hellhound. Dr. Kinney is already seeing the future, though, and pulls her young daughter away from the training. She needs to make a failsafe, for if Laura ever forgets who she really is, for that, she needs her blood. At 17, one year to go, Laura has become a capable warrior, using her magically enhanced claws to defeat Hellhound, blood oozing out of her wounds. I'm done for the day, unless you want to get up, she glares at her teacher. Herbert finally seems proud of Weapon Hex, barely noticing Sarah's absence and the fact that she seems so tired. Six months to go, Weapon Hex's first mission. Elsa Bladestone and her atheist crusaders are scaling Mount Wondegore, intent of ridding the world of the Demon Lord and his acolytes. Hellhound and Hex are sent to eliminate the threat, and the two descend from above, cutting through them quickly. But Elsa's attacks seem to have little effect on Hex as she uses her magics to heal and strike against her enemies. In the end, though, Bladestone escapes. Her father is laying dead in the snow. Later, Sarah visits her daughter in her chambers, but Laura seems distressed. Herbert has told her that her empathy is a weakness, and she didn't feel good when she killed those people on the mountain. Herbert isn't always right, Sarah tells her. It's okay to care. Underneath the spells and the genetic meddling, you're only human. It's 48 hours until the day. Hellhound and Hex are sent on another mission to retrieve the artifact from the midnight guns that will help the ritual. The two crash through the window, attacking their enemies quickly. And as they cut through the group, blood is spraying across the walls. Hex stands over the fallen Hellfire. Yet, she hesitates. Hellhound's boot lands on the man's face, stomping out his life. I gotta do every damn thing around her, she curses. Back at the castle, Herbert is angry that Hex choked before the kill. It doesn't matter, though soon the ceremony will begin. Still angry. He orders Sarah to prep the vessel. Alone, Sarah explains to her daughter that they are leaving, that they have to run because she can't take the chance that the ceremony will kill her daughter. But something begins to happen. Mom, you have to run. Laura struggles as the blind rage from the triggering spell begins to overtake her. She attacks her claws burying into her own mother's chest. And when it's over, 
She cries over her mother's body, apologizing. It's okay, honey. I love you. Take care of your sister. She tells her before dying. Elsewhere in the cavil, Bavel the bovine, Nanny, readies to leave, along with her charge, Speed Weasel. Nothing can stop Laura as she cuts through the castle. She begins to threaten the cultists, and the panic screams from Weapon Hex being offline fill the corridors as she slashes her way through. room. I have a sister! Where is she? The door to Speed Weasel's room shatters inward, revealing Bavel. The nanny introduces Laura to her sister, Gavril. I told you, call me Speed Weasel, the little girl states, peering around her nanny's dress. Laura questions why she wants to be called Speed Weasel, but she receives the answer when Gavril zips around the room in a cackle of energy. The family gathering, though, is quickly interrupted as Herbert and Hellhound enter the room. Come here, little Speed Weasel, Herbert motions, but Laura jumps between him, ordering him to stay away. Yeah, stay away, Speed Weasel echoes. Herbert glares at his daughter. Laura believes that she is safe because she is the vessel. Gavril isn't her sister, she is her clone. The backup plan of Laura didn't work out. Your use is at an end. Dispatch your hellhound. Hellhound runs forward at the two of them, locking blades against each other, with Laura yelling for Speed Weasel to run and destroy as much as she can. Bavel pleads to Herbert, trying to make him see the errors of his ways. But Hellhound quiets her as she drives her magic blade through her heart. Distracted, Laura leans over her former nanny, tears in her eyes. The brief moment is all Hellhound needs as she rears up behind her. In the main chamber, Speed Weasel crackles around the room at a magically enhanced speed, taunting Herbert's acolytes. Run, run, run! Break, break, break! I smash your stuff! She crows, but she is suddenly snatched from her run by Hellhound, the wicked creature smiling at her. The acolytes cheer, offering to kill Speed Weasel. Herbert is suddenly among them, ordering Hellhound to chain her in the center of the room while he gains enough blood for the ritual. His axe is hacking through the acolytes, spraying their blood around. My sister's going to kick your butts, Speed Weasel screams. Yet Hellhound smiles, because Laura's already dead. Back in the other room, Laura speaks a magical incantation, pulling her severed limbs back to her, struggling to get back to her feet. I'm coming, Gavril. In the ritual chamber, the demon lord has risen with black tendrils looming over Gavril. But Laura is there slicing through her chains. Herbert bellows at them. Their souls belong to him. Someone will be the vessel today. Hex and Hellhound then clash again as the black tendrils encircle Hex. And she casts a final spell to cut down Hellhound, turning her into a blackened and charred skeleton. Anger courses through Herbert and he casts his own spell, bringing a storm of hellfire down on weapon Hex turning her body into a pile of ash. Heal from that, he says as he spits. Stunned, Speed Weasel slows briefly, just long enough for the black tendrils to entangle her. As the demon lord begins to overtake her body, the pile of ash begins to swirl and transform, and in a sparkle of magical energy, Weapon Hex is born again. She cradles Speed Weasel in her arms as the child transforms, a single tear falling from her eye. You're not a monster. Or a weapon. You're a human being like me, she tells her. Magical energy begins to flow over her, warping the room around her, and she glares at Herbert. I call upon the spirit of those who died for your madness to destroy you. As the spirits of the dead move against Herbert, Hex leaps at the creature that her sister has become, piercing its eyes with her magically charged claws. The demon's hold over Gavril is broken, and the body of her small sister falls back into her arms. The spirits of the dead cut through Herbert, leaving nothing but a chamber broken, destroyed, and covered in the blood of the damned. You're safe now, Gavril. Laura hugs her sister tight. We're both safe, and you can call me Speed Weasel. What comes next? The young Kinney asks. The two stand with Laura taking her sister's hand in hers. I don't know, but I know it doesn't happen here. And the two walk out of the castle into the world. And there you have it, the story of Weapon Hex. Now, this story, in my opinion, wraps up in a much better way. It's kind of got some full closure, unlike Arachnite, where it kind of left us on a cliffhanger. This is just a fun story, and Weapon Hex was one of my personal favorites at the Infinity Warps situation. Now, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel, because we're going to be bringing you Iron Hammer very soon, and then the conclusion to Infinity Wars. So you want to stick around for all of that stuff. I'll see you next time right here at Comic Story.